I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm glad you could join us this evening. I'm happy to welcome Jan Priesen. Priesen. Right. Appreciate you being here tonight. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and you have a very interesting and heartfelt story to tell, and I, I hope that uh, the Lord will direct what we say, that it'll uh, touch hearts out there. I'm sure you hope the same I thing. I hope the same <laughs> thing, yes. Tell us a little bit about your history. You were born in the Farmington area, is that right? I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And um, when I was in the first grade, I, I went to first grade in Farmington, Utah. Oh, okay. and. Um, yeah, I was uh, lived right there in Farmington. We went swimming at li the old lagoon swimming pool oh, yeah. during the summers, yeah. and um, I lived there until I was in the eighth grade. At which time, my father bought a ranch up in the Grace, Idaho area, Thatcher, Idaho. And you were active Mormons this whole time. Or? Um, yes, my mother, um, my dad was a little bit of a Jack Mormon. Was he? He was. He was darling. I lost him twelve years ago, oh, but. He was just a little rough around the edges, but just a darling man, kind. Yeah. Everybody loved him. Yeah. And um, my mother was very um, strong that we would go to primary, and she made sure we went to primary, and she made sure we, we went to church. And, um, my, and my dad was very supportive, took us all the time. He was a member. Yeah. They were not married in the temple, but oh. they were... And I was, did that bother you at all or come to your um, mind later? I'll, that I'll, I'll not, no, it never oh. really bothered me oh. um, too okay. much that they weren't married in the temple. Yeah. Um, I would have lessons on it, and I'd think, well, hmm. I'm not really sealed yet, but, you know, it didn't really bother me. I you thought I maybe would get taken care of I in thought the it would take, or something? I, thought they'd, I really thought they'd go through one day, and oh, they okay. did. They oh. did. Oh, they did eventually go mm -hmm. through. The they temple. did eventually go oh. through. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting too. You mentioned in Farmington in, in the primary that you went to uh, the the chapel that the yes or the church that yes the church the ch the old rock chapel right there on uh, in Farmington yeah. where there's a big mural of the very first primary. And that's where the fir first primary mm -hmm. was held. And then I can it? remember sitting on those pews as a little girl, looking up at the big mural and seeing Eliza R. Snow. But it's a beautiful mural yeah. with um, the, the the old-fashioned dresses and yeah. I'd daydream looking at that mural. <laughs> so were you active then as a young adult? I mean as a young, uh, youth? I was you active. To, mm -hmm. to mutual and that kind yes. of stuff? Mm -hmm. and active all through. I was Laurel president. That well, By then we had moved to Idaho okay. and um, I made great friends, still good friends. My very best friend is um, her name's Erin, and yeah. she, we're still just best friends. She lives in Logan. Oh, okay. and, uh, but this was Grace, Idaho. This was Grace, Idaho. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. In a little farming community. and Potato, mostly yeah. potatoes. Mm -hmm. Were there a, a lot of LDS there? A hundred percent, I would say. I mean, maybe not a hundred percent, but there's the only church in town was the Stake Center, and that's wow. where our, that was our, um, our social life. Yeah. I mean, I love State Conference because we got to see all the kids from all the areas, all the areas, <laughs> and not just our ward. Yeah. So I loved State Conference. I loved the Golden Green Balls. 
because yeah. it was social. It was, yeah. we're, hey, yeah. there's a party going on. So, <laughs> You had an interesting little story about how, uh, I, I know this from my life as from Gunnison, Utah. I was born there, but uh, you, you said that they were a little rough around the edges up there in, in Grace, Idaho. Just a too. little rough. I mean, I remember seeing chewing tobacco in the drinking fountain at, at, at our little Thatcher Ward, and it wasn't a huge deal. Yeah. You know, I mean, I thought somebody's had a little problem here in <laughs> the drinking fountain, but uh, just a little, yeah. you know, they were just the best people just in the good world. Just good-hearted people, aren't the they? The best people, and yes. Hard working and hardworking. Hardworking. You they know, love the Lord, I guess. They love the, the Lord. They love the church, certainly. They love, they love the church, and yeah. they, love, they love the Lord. Yeah. They do. Yeah. And um, better people never existed. They yeah. just, they're just good good folk. Yeah. Did you take seminary? I did. Did they have seminary? You bet they did. Yeah. We got release time. We didn't have to go early morning. <laughs> didn't. Yeah. Do you feel like you had a testimony of Joseph Smith and the you know, Book of Mormon? I did. I remember my seminary teacher telling us one day um, that he looked over the class and said, 50% of you will not marry in the temple. And I looked around at all the kids and I thought, well, that's not good. That's not true. And I made it, I thought, I'm not going to be that 50%. That's half. Yeah. And that, that was kind of frightening to me. That was a that half. teacher said that. Yeah. Huh? So Just I, going on statistics. On statistics. Yeah. And, and it kind of, I thought, well, that's not going to be me. <laughs> and I had, I have still to this day can remember that. Wow. He told us that only half of us would get married in the temple. Yeah. And so I just thought, well, I'm going to be the half that gets married. Okay. in the temple. So So what happens after seminary and high school and so on? So I came to Salt Lake to go to school. Okay. And um and I was active. I moved in. I mean, I thought I was pretty LDS, but I was nothing compared to my roommates. Oh. They were ultra LDS. And from um, Salt Lake, were they? Well, from no, one was from Brit um Tremonton. Oh. And uh, one was from Salmon, Idaho. And I remember the gal from Salmon, Idaho, her dad was a state president. And one, um, one general conference, they invited uh, the roommates to come over and watch general conference. They had come down and got a hotel. Okay. And um, I, they made us dress up. I had to get in a dress and sit in a stiff back chair and watch conference at the at the <laughs> hotel and I thought this is just no fun at all in because your Sunday best, in huh? my Sunday best I thought we get to lay around at home on the couch <laughs> and we don't have to <laughs> sit up here like it's and a, I was scared to death I thought that dad is going to get mad if I you know I can't talk I can't, this is serious business wow. so th I, then I became acquainted with you know really pretty strict LDS oh okay and I yeah. thought ooh I'm not I'm not living it up as much as I should. That's interesting. I, there are people in the church that take it very seriously, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens after that? Let's see. After well, I. Um, you went to school. I went to you? school. Yeah, I met my husband um, actually at a um, a young adult, a singles ward river trip. Oh. And he was a boatman. Uh huh. And um, I we met on the river, but we didn't get married till three or four years later and he pursued me and um, he's a return missionary. he was a return he? missionary yeah. he went to Mexico he's very fluent in Spanish okay. and he's a very dear sweet man yeah. he's still LDS okay. and he um, he's given me his permission I asked him I said I don't want to do anything that would be embarrassing to you or cause you um, grief or embarrassment yeah. or, or shame yeah. because I, you're my husband and I won't I won't you know I, I won't talk to Bishop Earl <laughs> if it's going to and he said no I believe in the 11th article of faith wow. and you worship how where whatever you may go ahead wow. and so I, I, I give him a lot of credit for that yeah that, I do too that he is you know I honor him for that that he would let me that he would give me his permission. permission to share your story mm -hmm. We do have a heart and a love for the LDS people, don't we? <laughs> we love that. I love my LDS. I live in South Jordan, Utah. Yeah. I'm. I love them. Yeah. I just. I love them. You know, they're my my dearest friends. We've raised our children together, and um, yeah. I have nothing but love for them. 
Well, so you get married in the temple. Got married in the temple. And uh, from then you're active in the church, you're raising your family. Very active. We had, uh, you're very active. Mm -hmm. Your primary president, I I was the primary president. Other callings, I'm My sure. My husband <laughs> was young men's president, and he was always taking them boating to um, Flaming Gorge or to Lake Powell. He loved his priests. He, um, yeah. my husband gave a lot. He would, you know, buy the treats and yeah. and just always wanted to give more than what was expected. You know, he was yeah. he he was a a diligent. He still is. Yeah, dedicated. he's a diligent, dedicated S member of the church. <sighs> so you had a couple of experiences that kind of. Uh, led you to think a little differently about things. Tell us I one, I, I know one about, about Easter one time. Oh, <laughs> yes. One time, um, it was in Grace, Idaho, at Thatcher, actually. Um, I had gone home from school to, because it was Easter vacation, yeah. and we went to Easter. And with my mother, I remember driving over there. Anyway, um, we went to Easter and we were coming home and my mother said, I don't know what you'd have to do around here to get a decent Easter message, but that certainly was not about Easter today. And then she proceeded to tell us what Easter, about Resurrection Sunday. And she said, Easter is about the Lord dying for us and, and he, he paid the price for our sin and he rose again on the third day and that was totally missed today but you know, it's a lay clergy. The LDS, yeah, you know, the they're speakers. not, they're not, they're not getting paid. They're no. not getting, you know, and yeah. so you can't expect that you're going to get, you know, a total Easter Sunday message all the time. But it really bothered her. Yeah. And she was like, because I remember what he talked about, and he was talking about not letting your kids sharpen their teeth on the wooden bench pews. Oh. And she's like, and that is just not Easter worthy about not letting your kids sharpen their teeth on the pews. Not quite the message And of so I, that, that was in my mind. Yeah. Even though if she sees this program, she'll be like, oh, Mom. I probably didn't say that, but she did. <laughs> she did. That's what you remember for sure. That's what I remember. Uh -huh. Did you notice at all after that, or did you look at, think about the messages that we do here at church and the LDS church? Yeah, and you know, a lot of, yeah, I did think about. They, um, they, not a lot of Jesus and Christ. You I know, mean, it's but, there at, and but at the time it was, I mean, and, and we sing the songs, He is risen at Easter, and, yeah. and so, yeah. And the sacrament. And the sacrament, and so on, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you go through the temple. I go through again, the temple. With your, wife, uh, with your husband. Right, so, uh, 22 us, years old. Tell us of that experience. It was in the Logan, Utah temple, yeah. and uh, we got married on the coldest day of the year in <laughs> December, and uh, I just remember being, um, going through for my endowments, we went through a week ahead of time, yeah. and I was sitting there, and um, I just had a fear come over me, like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, why didn't somebody tell me we belong to a cult? And then I just seriously, I had to talk to myself. I was like, I'm a little claustrophobic, yeah. and so I've had to talk to myself in certain rides and stuff where I can't get out of. So I just talk to myself and say, you can do so this, you Jen. You can do this, yeah. And so I looked across the aisle. I was on the end, and I looked across. The men were on the other aisle, and I was looking at their hands. I noticed they were rugged hands. They were hardworking hands. Yeah. And they were, I thought, these are good people here. Yeah. These are good folk. And yeah. if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. And so I just talked myself through it, and I thought, there, those people aren't going to be involved in anything like a cult. Yeah. Those men are hardworking. Those look like hay hauling hands to me. And I was people. just like, they're not going to be involved. So Jan, you're just going to have to talk yourself through this fear. Yeah. But then um, later on, you know, when I learned the scripture, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power and love and of a sound mind, fear does not come from God. So that fear was not coming from God. And, um, you know, Satan is, yeah. is the great deceiver. He's the father of all lies. And he's in the temple. And he's in the temple. What is he doing in the temple? He's putting they, fear in our hearts. He's, exactly. Yeah. If you don't live up to this, 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 and this, then 
Oh, woe well, be you'll to be, you. You'll be in my control. And Who was, who's going to believe him? He doesn't have the truth in him. Any, he couldn't tell the truth if he wanted to. Because the truth is not, the Bible says the truth is not in him. That's so true. So, so that started making you think a little bit, I guess. And, and not till later, but. Yeah, you yeah. reflected Well, I back thought, on I that. told my husband, I said. What did he say? What was that? And <laughs> he, he said, Jan, don't worry about it. He'd been but, through before be, on his like, mission. He just said, I know it's a little weird, but you don't, need, don't think about it. It's just a little weird, and we don't understand everything. And oh. I was like, a little weird, you think? <laughs> but then, you know, everybody else acts like it's totally normal, and you don't yeah. want to be the weirdo saying, this is not normal. You don't want to be like, because you... Then, you don't even want to think that it isn't true. Right. Or that it isn't from God. Right. I mean, your heart is so... Full, full, and you want to right. Do and what's I'm, right. I'm waiting for the celestial room to see if I can see some, maybe a dead ancestor is going to come, or I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just there for the. Yeah. You, I don't know what to expect. Yeah. Well, we've heard some interesting stories about the temple, but it's, uh, it's definitely a little different. And uh, when you look back on it, then you start really kind of putting it in pers into perspective, even mm -hmm. though it bo bothers you initially, initially you don't really yeah. uh, think much more about it. So you're raising your children and mm -hmm. things are going along well, I guess. You know, things, uh, we had premature twins and I, they almost died. I had one daughter that, that was just, they told me she would not make it and I spent just hours on my oh. knees, just hours begging the Lord, just, you know, Lord, I will do whatever, just, you know, I don't want to lose my daughter. Mm. I just don't want to lose her. And um, and the Lord was merciful to me. And he, you know, she's beautiful. She's 26 years old. They're and she's doing well. Beautiful. Uh -huh. We're just, you know, healthy. We don't just, it's a miracle. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was just, you know, I, I praise God every day for, for her and and how he's blessed, blessed he blessed our lives while we were LDS while I was LDS he was you know God is a good God. Well, I've I've had to deal with that with blessings that I've given and other things where I've seen the hand of God and it certainly sounds like in your case you did too, but don't you believe that God loves us as individuals he, no matter where we're at? He loves us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he wants us, and, and so. He, he loves us as individuals and we mm -hmm. love him we love whether him. we're in the church or out of the church mm -hmm. well what happens to kind of make you start looking at the church a little differently well, even more than a couple of these other, other experiences okay um there was the temple experience and there was the easter experience and then um you know i just was i was very involved i was in the stake um, special needs program, and I loved that program. I loved it. I mm -hmm. loved serving with those special needs kids. Yeah. And, um, but I had memorized a scripture from the Bible, and I thought, I, I have a pretty good memory. I can remember birthdays. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, I probably know, I don't know, four, 400 birthdays. Oh I just, I thought, I couldn't put this mind to better use than trivia, I need to start um, memorizing some scripture. And I memorized Jude 24 and 25. And it says, for him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, amen. And that got in my heart and I would find myself um, thinking thinking about it, and I thought what was it he. To you? I thought Jesus is able to present us to the Father faultless, and not only is he going to present us faultless, it says with exceeding joy. And I think he's going to say to his Father, "Here's Janet," and he's going to be not just joyful, exceedingly joyful. Wow! And that got in my it got in my heart and I was just so overcome by that love that he would present me faultless to the Father. Did you understand grace and works at this no, point? No, at this point I didn't understand that 
but the word is powerful yeah. and sharper than and a, a two-edged two sword. sword. Yeah. And so it was in my heart. And not only that, my husband had a cousin who called us out of the blue about 10, maybe 12 years ago. And she was born again Christian. And um, she would always um, you know, talk to me about God and she'd pray with me. And, um, and we became close through, through phone contact. <sighs> But I was trying to convert her, so I remember pa uh, packing up a marvelous work in wonder, and a, yeah. I'm not sure what I all packed her up, and I sent it her to, way to get her to believe. Right, I yeah. was like, I wanted her to have what I had, yeah. so I sent her off a marvelous work in wonder, and yeah. I never heard back. From Looking her about back, that. though, do you see God's hand in touching your heart in yes. different ways through the years? Through the years, yeah. because I found myself going through trials. And I found myself calling her because I, I could tell she had, she, a, had a relationship. she had a relationship with God. And I'd call her, her name's Hildy, and I'd call her and I'd say, Hildy, I've got a problem. What should I do? And she'd say, well, Jan, let's pray about it. Wow. And she would just immediately go into prayer. And so I found myself going to, you know, going to her for, yeah. now Hildy, you know, I know you have a connection with God, so you need to pray about this for me, or let's pray about this. And so um, one day I just had this overwhelming desire to know more about Christ, or I, and I called her up and I said, Hildy, I think I might belong to a cult. And I thought she was going to say, no, you don't, Jan, you don't belong to a cult. I thought she was going to say, you're just fine where you are. But she said, oh, I've been praying for ten, over 10 years for you. For you to see that. Yeah, she says, what I want you to do is I want you to go to a Christian church and go three times. And I don't care if you don't like it, I don't care. Give it three times. So you dressed up so and went I, to a Christian well, church. Well, I and, and this is where I was wrong because I lied to my husband. I, told, I had lots of meetings with, yeah. the, with the South Jordan steak and I said I have a meeting this morning I just didn't specify where the meeting was <laughs> exactly <laughs> so you went to so a Christian I went to church. a Christian church how and different was that you know it was it was different yeah I walked in and I'm dressed up and um, I sat next to a guy who was wearing his flip-flops and a long ponytail and I thought well okay um, this, this is, is it. this <laughs> is it but I loved the worship I, I noticed where all the worship was, and it was all, all to Jesus. It was all to Jesus, yeah. and they they raised their hands, and it was, you know, I just sat there. I wept through the whole. Isn't it? I just wept, yeah. and I was about th three or four rows back, and I just was overcome with the love that and the of, praise and the, of praise Jesus, and the Jesus. worship. Yeah, we had never experienced and that, how, how did we? No, and at this point, I still wasn't, I went home, went to sacrament meeting, and oh, you did. didn't tell anybody that I'd been to church already, but. Um, and you did that for three I weeks. I did that for three weeks, and somewhere in that, somewhere in that three weeks, somewhere along that, I don't have a date when I was born again, I can't tell you. But somewhere you became but a new creature. But somewhere I became a new creature, and I yeah. and there's nothing like it. And your husband's still supportive, and. And then I had to come clean Did you? to my husband, oh. and I just said, um, you know, I, I'm, I can't, I can't go back to Mormon Church with you. Once your and eyes are opened, and and you see that you, it's just. And he was devastated. Yeah. Devastate. I mean, that's putting it mild, mildly. And the temple I, marriage and everything. The temple marriage. And he's, he said, what is the last 20-something, 20 29 years? I don't know how long it was, 28 years. Yeah. Is, I feel like it's just for nothing. And I, I said, I'm, I am so sorry. But I have, I have a responsibility to get right with God the best way I can. And I, mm. I'm not doing this to hurt you. I just, the Bible says I have to love God first. I have to put Him first. And it's been rough. Have you, it's it, been rough on Him. Have you lost? Broke His heart. 
family members? I mean, other the kids and how um, do they feel? You know, the kids are pretty open, and mm. they they are pretty they're pretty sweet about the whole thing. Well, Jan, you've got just a couple of minutes left, believe it or not. What do you? I can't believe it. I know. What I, do you? What's your relationship with Jesus and I, the Bible now? I just feel. You know, if I could just say one thing is worship. We were created to worship, and um, if I feel gypped out of anything, I feel gypped out of being able to worship and raise my hands and give Him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise for what He did. He did it all. All to Him I owe. And we just don't do that in in the LDS you know, Church, do we? No, we just don't. And and what do you? We just don't. If, if everybody knew what we know it's, now. It's blessed it, assurance. Yeah. Jesus is mine. Yeah. Oh, what a foretaste of glory <laughs> divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. You know, washed in his blood. Yeah. He did it all. There's nothing we can do. Yeah, we can't add anything to the free gift. No. Yeah. He did it all. All to him we owe. And the cross. And, and the cross. And the shed it's blood. It's beautiful. Is, it is it's glorious. And you think about him all day long, and yeah. I'll never get over the fact of being saved. I hope I never get over it. No, I don't think you will. And it's been just a couple of years for you, a couple of years for us, and, and the joy is just The joy uh, is, is almost unspeakable. Sometimes I'd have to pinch myself and think, a holy, righteous God would, would woo me to him yeah. and save me. Do you wish you'd have been able to share differently with husband at, at any point would have made a difference maybe you know i i don't know yeah. and god's timing is perfect and i know and so we i trust, don't we have i to don't trust worry that. about my husband yeah. i i think he's born again and doesn't know it yet but yeah i don't know maybe he i don't i don't worry about him i yeah. give it to god well that's wonderful I, well i appreciate so much your story and your I appreciate uh, you having me. Yeah, Thank you. I think this will touch hearts. I, I think there are a lot of people that relate to, to you, and maybe when they think back of what they've experienced in the temple or other Easter programs, that, well, where's Jesus in all this? Maybe they'll start thinking that maybe there is something different if we turn our lives to Christ and read the Bible. Trust read the Bible. the Bible. Trust His Word. Yeah. He's not gonna. He says, "I will not lie." He yeah. cannot lie. Thanks, Jan, very much. Thank you. Appreciate you watching, and remember, you're following the Gospel of Joseph Smith and not the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night.